Welcome to 22 and 23. Today's topic is birth control. All right, so let's do a quick rundown of different types of birth control. We're starting with barrier methods, and those include condoms and dental dams. Um, condoms are very effective when used appropriately and consistently. So that means the right fit and every time. However, they aren't always used effectively. So failure rate is about 17%. We're going to talk about condoms in a different episode though. Then we go to hormonal methods of birth control. This includes the birth control pill, patch, ring, depo, Nexplanon, some IUDs are hormonal as well. Birth control pills, two types of birth control pills, combination and progesterone only. Um, failure rate for pills overall is about 7%, which means human error. They work really well when you take them around the same time every day consistently, but we're human. We forget sometimes failure rate about 7%. Same deal for the patch. So the patch is a birth control patch that you put on your body, you change it once a week, failure rate about 7% just because we're human. The other thing about the patch is that there are some studies that have shown that with increasing body weight, um, the patch is less effective, so isn't a great option for everybody. And then we've got the ring, which is a vaginal ring, hormonal ring that you put in your vagina. You change it out every three weeks. Again, about 7% failure rate. Then we go to the Depo shot, which is a progesterone only derivative. And that's a shot that you get every 13 weeks. And it's actually very effective when used on time for prolonged periods of time. So studies show over 99% effective when used consistently. However, people forget, people are late to get their shot failure rate on average of about 4% in the first year. This is also the type of birth control that is most associated with the complaints of weight gain. So keep that in mind. If that's something that you're worried about, the studies are a little bit mixed on that, but if that's a concern for you, might not be the right option for you. However, a benefit of Depo is that many people lose their period entirely. So plus, and then we have Nexplanon, also a progesterone only derivative. It's an implant that goes in your arm right here. It can stay there for, it's FDA approved for three years, usually effective for up to five, but um, very effective, less than 1% failure. And then there's the hormonal IUD. IUD, intrauterine device, goes in the uterus and it's a little T-shaped device that sits there and that's basically it less than 1% failure rate, again, because little user error. So um, very effective form of birth control. Different types of IUDs can last um, a varying number of years. And so there's one form that lasts three years, and then there are five years and up to eight years for hormonal IUDs. And then there is the copper IUD, which is a good option for someone who needs to avoid any sort of hormones in their body or if you choose the copper iud it's very effective less than one percent failure rate um it's a again an intrauterine device t-shaped device that sits in the uterus and it can stay there for up to 10 years so really cool really effective um, it can also be used for emergency contraception so if you have unprotected sex Getting the IUD placed within five days of unprotected sex can provide um, prevention from pregnancy. And then it stays there for ongoing pregnancy protection. Other forms of emergency contraception, the morning after pill, which is available over the counter, reduced efficacy with body mass index or BMI over 25, but can still be effective. And then Ella, a different pill available by prescription can be effective up to BMI of 30. Still effective beyond 30, but a little bit less effective than it would be below 30. And again, back to the IUD, great option for someone who has a higher BMI, incredibly effective, weight doesn't impact it at all. 
And then finally, other birth control methods include the natural methods like natural family planning, tracking your ovulation, and pulling out or the withdrawal method. So ovulation tracking involves tracking when you ovulate and then avoiding intercourse during your fertile window or using extra protection during that time. And then pulling out, pretty darn popular, can enhance a method of birth control. By itself, not super effective, um, about 78% effective, mostly because human error. So not pulling out in time, and then pre-cum has the risk of carrying some sperm in it too. So um, that sort of recaps the bulk of birth control methods out there. So on to your questions. Question number one, if I already took one of my placebo pills, can I skip my period and just start taking the hormone pills? Okay, so your question is, you are on day one of your placebo and you changed your mind and thought, oh, I just wanna skip my period. Sure, yeah, you can skip it. You might notice some spotting because it sounds like this might be your first time skipping your period. So you might have some spotting when your body thinks, oh, there's the withdrawal. No, it's not there. Um, not a big deal. Spotting usually goes away um, after the first couple of months of skipping a period. Question number two. Hi, I just really wanted to ask, is it possible to get a really short light period when you first start taking birth control pills? I just started taking birth control control pills for the first time this month and my period lasted around four days. Is that normal? Yes. So periods or withdrawal bleeding on the birth control pills can be super light and cramp free. So cool. Question number three. I've been on the birth control pill combined hormones for around three years. I've not gotten my period in over a year. I don't take the blank pills in my pack. And I've been taking them every day now at the same time. I was just wondering, how would I know if I'm pregnant on the pill since I don't take the blanks? Was wondering if the pill is more effective if you take it without missing any. Thank you. Yes. So you sound like a diligent pill taker. And I would say that the chance of you being pregnant is you're you're in that less than 1%. You're, you're fabulous. Um, good question. If you have... Any, so the way the combination pill works is that it suppresses ovulation. So um, if you don't ovulate, there's no chance that sperm can meet up with an egg and fertilize the egg. So no chance of pregnancy. So if you're taking them as prescribed, the chance of pregnancy is, is minimal. You've suppressed your ovulation. If you ever have any concerns, you can certainly take a pregnancy test, but Again, this is a very effective form of birth control when taken as directed. We would strongly advise that someone take pregnancy tests when they skip pills or aren't regular users. Um, you can also always, if you're worried, just give yourself a, a withdrawal bleeding. Um, stop taking the pills for a week. Let your system do with some withdrawal bleeding and then start again. Um, you, If you are pregnant, you would not experience withdrawal bleeding. Um, question number four, I'm on a great routine with my birth control. I was on the first day of my placebo pill, week four, and my boyfriend and I had sex. He pulled out very early. I got my period three days later. Am I still protected from pregnancy with the birth control in my system? Yes, you are. So the birth control works by suppressing ovulation and then you get, if you want, that withdrawal bleeding or period. So when you take those active pills, you're suppressing ovulation. So you are controlling the hormones in your body that cause ovulation, and then you have a period, and then you start taking them again, and it controls ovulation. And so you are essentially, to answer your question, yes, you're protected. Yes, you're protected if you have sex during that placebo week. You, the chance of pregnancy is none. Question number five. My girlfriend takes the pill for three weeks and I believe the fourth week is when she has the placebo week. However, she doesn't take anything the fourth week because they are optional. She says that she starts her pack on time and never misses a day. 
Is she still protected during the placebo week even though she doesn't take those optional pills? Yes. So the placebo pills are like sugar pills. There's nothing in them except for, it's kind of that reminder just to yourself to take the pill every day, but you don't have to take them. If she's otherwise regular with the combination pills, she's still protected. Placebo pills don't have anything in them, so she's fine. Question six, does weed make combined birth control pills less effective? No, they're effective. Same with alcohol and um, antibiotics. The only antibiotic that can reduce the efficacy of a birth control pill is rifampin, which is a tuberculosis medicine. Question seven, can plan B make your period late? I had a problem in which the condom broke and I took plan B about 30 minutes after, but now my period isn't here and I'm starting to freak out. Period changes after taking the morning after pill are the most common side effect. So spotting, irregular bleeding, and then either an early or late period, heavy period, all of those are super common side effects. So don't panic. If your period hasn't come after three weeks, take a pregnancy test. But bleeding changes are the most common side effect of the morning after pill. Question number eight. I had unprotected sex and took an emergency contraception combination. So this person doesn't have access to the morning after pill, so they sort of made their own morning after pill, which actually in some countries they recommend. So that's okay. Um, I experienced withdrawal bleeding and had protected sex the following week. However, I haven't had my period since. Am I ovulating or are these side effects of the pill? All right. This is very likely just a normal side effect of taking emergency contraception. Um, especially if you said that you used protection with sex. Again, um, the most common side effect is going to be bleeding changes. And so if you wanted to take a pregnancy test now, it should be accurate. Um, but you should be this is this sounds like it's likely a side effect from the um, morning after pill. Question number nine. Hello. In May, I had protected sex and took two emergency contraceptions during that week for extra protection. The following week, I had heavy bleeding with clots for five days up until the day before I was supposed to start my actual period. I don't know if the bleeding I had was an early period or bleeding from the pill. The next month I took two urine pregnancy tests just to make sure and a blood test that came back negative. Should I believe the blood result? Okay, so one, periods versus withdrawal bleeding versus bleeding from the pill. Your bleeding was a sign that there is no pregnancy and it was probably because you took uh, two emergency contraception pills. So um, very, unlikely just in and of itself from that situation bleeding afterward that you would be pregnant. Yes, then you need the the blood test, the urine tests are all very accurate. I would believe those for sure. Um, I know pregnancy can be really anxiety inducing, but you're not pregnant. Question 10. I'm wondering how deep an IUD is inserted into the vagina and how far into the uterus is there a chance the IUD would get in the way of a bigger size penis? So, interesting question. Some partners say that they can feel like the strings of the IUD, but the IUD itself should be inserted completely into the cervix. So, no matter how well endowed you are, don't worry, you're not gonna displace an IUD. Bonus question 11. What are the chances of getting pregnant with condoms plus pulling out. I can't get regular birth control because of strict parents, so this is the only method I can resort to. Is it reliable? Yes. Using condoms every time, especially when they fit well, they don't break, um, and pulling out, you're doing the best that you can, so good job. And that'll do it for this round of 22 and 23.